um, we're doing fall containers. And so I'm actually going to demonstrate here today on all the different ideas that you can do for fall containers. Um, in a couple weeks, we'll be doing pansies in containers. So I'm not going to use a lot of pansies, although pansies are in. Um, it's a great plant. It's great color, lots of different colors. You know, you've got an orange one here. We've got maroons. We've got pinks, purples. I mean, everything, every color that you can think of white. Uh, we've got lots and lots of pansies and even more coming in. Uh, October is a great time to plant pansies. Uh, we're in the end of September, so we're getting very close. But I'll do, I'm going to do a whole webinar on different ideas that you can use for planting pansies. Um, whether it's in your landscape or in containers or whatever it might be. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about fall containers and all the different things that you can use. Um, there's lots and lots of choices um, to kind of give you that fall feeling. We're going to do some in the shade, we're going to do some in the sun, we're going to do uh, a bulb container, so there's lots and lots of exciting things to do. Um, as you can see, I've got lots of fall decorations. I'm surrounded by plants. Um, I've got my potting soil. I'm ready to kind of get rolling. Uh, what I always talk about first is the components of of a, of a great container. Um, but before I start on that, I actually want to show you just kind of a simple idea because maybe you feel like you don't want to do that or maybe you've got a bunch of steps that you need to fill. Um, I love grouping things in containers. So it's very, very easy to do. So I'm going to kind of shift some stuff around here so that I've got some space to work in um, and kind of show you some of these ideas that you can do um, on your porch or patio or steps or out in the fall, out in the garden. You can do this anywhere. And so this, I've just got a mum in a container in a plastic in a uh, terracotta. I love terracotta in the fall. It's so kind of it's got that fall look to it. And so just doing a grouping of different containers is a great option. I've got another terracotta pot slightly bigger. So again, I'm just going to do a little grouping here of these terracotta pots. And there's a croton. I love crotons. So crotons you're going to see a lot. Um, I I really talk about these a lot for the summer. For especially in a, on a covered porch area where they can get a little bit of shade, you don't. They can grow in a good amount of light, but you don't want them in full blazing sun. They can tend to uh, burn a little bit. Um, but up on a porch or patio, it gives you that tropical feel. I mean, look at all those colors in there. But what I love about them is they transition into fall so good, uh, so well. And the the colors in them really are great for the tropical side. So when you're in the summertime frame, use the use the the colors that you see in Croton to make your tropical garden, uh, your tropical containers. Um, reds and yellows and oranges and greens, uh, maroons, there's lots and lots of different colors in this one plant and I love to use it for my tropical look but also for the fall look. Paired with a mom like that and then all we have to do is drop a pumpkin in here if we want to or two or three or four. Uh, we got lots and lots of different types of pumpkins and gourds and squash. So there you go, you can just do a simple grouping. These are just individual plants in separate containers and so you can kind of get a really cool look like that just by grouping them and it's very very simple and very very easy to do um, and it doesn't take a lot of thought either so it looks great on steps out in the garden kind of grouped together get a bale of wheat straw and you can kind of play different heights love corn stalks we'll be using these in a little bit I'll show you kind of different ways that you can use corn stalks get a corn stalk you can make a fall look very easy without having to worry about necessarily putting a bunch of different plants in a pot however I think that's a lot of fun and so that's what we're going to talk about next but this is one great idea is just to group different things. So, what I like to talk about now is the different components of a good container. Spillers, thrillers, and fillers. It's a very easy thing to remember. Uh, spillers are obviously gonna spill outside of the pot. So, in this kind of arrangement, I might say that my pumpkins are the spillers. They're the ones that are kind of eating up some of this negative space down here in the front. Uh, my thriller is obviously gonna be my croton, and then my filler is my mom. It's gonna fill in that void. So your thriller is usually your higher, taller plant, your filler is going to be kind of that low mid-level plant and then your spiller is going to usually spill, all, spill out of the side. So a great um, representation of that, I don't know if you can quite see this, is this one's got a ornamental pepper, a dark purple ornamental pepper. Then it's got this other pepper that's kind of spilling out over the edges and then it's got a uh, ornamental kale or cabbage um, as its filler. So again, lots of different ideas there. Here's another one. We've got this awesome um, a chorus grass in here, this really pretty lime green grass, and then we've got this blue succulent here that you can see that's spilling out of the side, and then we've got an ornamental pepper, and we've got a heuchera, this really pretty coral bells heuchera, this maroon color. And then over on the back side, we've even got another little ornamental cabbage and kale. So really easy to do, kind of keeping those kind of concepts in mind, the spiller, thriller, and filler. So very easy. Thriller is going to be your tall plant, spiller is going to hang out of the side, and the filler is going to fill in that kind of in-between space. So again, it doesn't have to be that, but 
It's a great way to kind of get those, co those components of a great container all in one if you can. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is, and I've just slipped this mum in here. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to pull my croton out. Well, I'm going to leave the croton up here just so we can see it for those colors. I love that color arrangement. It's just amazing. And let's see if I can maneuver some things around here, get some space. All right, so the first one I want to do is we just did a webinar on bulbs. And I absolutely love bulbs. The value of bulbs is so high because you don't have to deal with a lot of issues. I mean, they're, they're easy. You plant them in the ground um, and you water them and you're kind of done and you don't have to do much other than a couple other tips and tricks that I shared during that webinar. So if you want to check that out, if you're interested in planting bulbs in the landscape in containers is what I'm going to show you now, um, then definitely check those out because there's a lot of choices in bulbs. They're super, super valuable. And I'm going to kind of show you how you can do them in containers. But if you have any other questions about bulbs, check out that webinar. It was a great webinar where we talked about everything you can do with bulbs and the different planting depths and the different frame times of when they bloom. Um, so it's a great little webinar there that we did just on Wednesday. Um, so, but what I want to show you is how to plant bulbs in a container. Now, you're probably thinking, what are you going to do here? This is, this is kind of strange. Well, I'm going to show you kind of two different concepts in one. Um, but the first one, what we want to do first is obviously fill up our container with soil. I love our natural and organic potting soil, an awesome, awesome potting soil to use outside. So this is what I'm going to use first. And whenever you're doing anything in containers, it's important to know that you're using a good quality soil. And what you want is always a potting soil. If you're doing anything in a pot, you want potting soil. If you use a garden soil, that's usually designed for in raised beds, to mix in with your soil when you're planting trees and shrubs or perennials. But whenever we're doing it in anything in pots, make sure it says potting soil. We've got two different types here. We've got our natural and organic potting soil, and we've got all-purpose all potting soil. Both are very, very good. They're both very similar. The all-purpose tends to be a little bit lighter, so I usually recommend that for plants that don't need a lot of moisture or like a lot of moisture or indoor plants. So whenever we're doing a lot of our house plant repotting, we'll talk about our all-purpose potting soil. But because this is going to be outside, I like the natural and organic. It tends to stay a little bit more moist, um, which means we can make it last, or we don't have to water as much, which is nice. All right, so what I'm going to do is fill this up about two-thirds of the way. So we'll move this off to the side for now. So I'll show you that. There we go. And it, whenever you look at your potting soil, you always want to see that nice, rich, dark brown soil. You're going to see some chunks of bark in there, different types of chunks and different types of sizes of medium. Um, that's what you want. This is going to have uh, basically composted bark. And then it's got a little bit of peat, vermiculite, and perlite. Perlite's those little white styrofoamy things you see in soils. Um, and that is what's going to help keep uh, the, the soil from compacting and allow moisture and allow the root systems to go through. Um, and then, of course, make sure that every pot that you do has a, has a drain hole in the bottom uh, because you want the water to drain out. Um, if, you're not do it, if, you don't have a, if you don't have a hole in the bottom of your pot, see if you can make one or get a different pot, especially if you're growing outside. You definitely don't want a container that doesn't have a drain hole in the bottom. So I fill this about two thirds of the way. And then I've picked up some bulbs. So what I've got here is I've got um, some Triumph or some trumpet uh, uh, daffodils. So a nice little mix. So what I like about this is it's a mix, so I'm not gonna do a certain type. And then I picked up some Darwin hybrid tulips. So the Darwin series tulips are awesome. Um, they bloom in mid spring and daffodils usually will bloom in early spring. So this one blooms in early spring, um, early to mid. So these are gonna bloom first along with my muscari. And so the way I kind of chose these was planting depth. Tulips and daffodils like about six inches deep. Muscari is going to like about uh, three inches deep, so not very, very deep. So that gives me a couple different layers to put these in, and that's how I'm going to do this. So I've got my pot filled up about two thirds. So what I want to do is measure from the ed from the edge of the pot, and I usually like to leave a lip around the edge for my soil so that I can capture water. So when I water my plant planter, it's very easy to water. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pull the soil away on this side of the pot. So I'm going to do these in kind of groupings. Um, and what I'm going to do is just make sure that I've got about six inches depth from where I'm going to do that. So I don't know if you can see that, but you can see I've got a deeper spot here dug out. So I'm just going to pull that up to the side, make sure that I can do that. And then I'm going to open up, I'm going to do my daffodils first. And I'm going to do those in a group. Now this is 15 daffodil bulbs. So that's a lot. I don't know if I'll put them all in here, 
Um, I can save them for another container, but I am going to put them fairly close to each other. They definitely don't mind being next to each other. Um, what we'll do is when this blooms in the spring, we'll enjoy it in the spring. And then when it's done and I want to go replant it, I can go replant it after that. Um, I can go take all those daffodils um, and replant them, or I can leave them in the container, plant them in the fall, um, which is perfectly fine too. So you got a couple different options there. But let me just place these in there. And I don't know which colors I'm grabbing. That's kind of the cool thing is you don't know what you're gonna get, but you got a mix here. So let's see how many I can get in. And I wanna do just about, just about half of the pot almost. I'm gonna try and leave my center a little bit hollow. And I'll show you what I'm talking about there in just a second. All right, see if you can see that. So you see how I've just done them on the edge here? and I've kind of left my, my center a little hollow there. And I'll explain why I'm gonna do that here in a little bit. Now I'm gonna take this soil on the other side, on the high side, and pull it over top of those daffodils and give myself about six inches over here on this side to plant my tulips. So now I've got my tulips. I love doing tulips in containers um, because you know if you've ever tried them in your landscape and you've got issues with squirrels or bowls, like I've got bowls in my yard and you know I've gotten rid of them, done my mole and bowl class, um, but they can come back and all of a sudden it's like, oh, there goes my tulips because the voles came and ate them. Squirrels can mess with them a little bit, um, but you can always use a repellent, but I love doing tulips in containers. Uh, it's a great way of doing it. Uh, but this is just taking a little bit of time just to kind of think through it and say, huh, before I plant anything on top of this container, I can put some bulbs down in the bottom. It's an awesome, awesome way. And you can do this in your landscape too. So you can plant, when you go to plant your pansies, throw a couple bulbs in that area. Uh, throw some daffodils down, put your pansies in, and then those will shoot right up through the pansies, and you'll be amazed in the, in, the, um, in the spring when they bloom how amazing that area looks with all that kind of naturalized color. And I just absolutely love tulip bulbs, just love the way that tulip bulbs look. Uh, it's just kind of that quintessential bulb look, just awesome, awesome looking bulbs. And like I said, Darwin hybrids are my favorite. Uh, they do very, very well in this area. All right, so now I'm just gonna pull the soil back over on that side. So now I've got half tulips, half daffodils, planted fairly close, but that's okay. I'm, I'm really doing this for a one season kind of bang of color in the spring. So I've got that done. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of soil over the top, just a little bit, because that's about six inches deep, which is the planting depth for your tulips and daffodils. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more soil and just add it right to the top here just to kind of almost like a dusting, just to barely cover them. Because each bulb is about, I don't know, maybe one to two inches tall. So if I'm gonna put this in there, then I've just got a little bit of soil here to kind of work my muscari on. So now I've got muscari here. So muscari is this little um, kind of bluish purple spiky little flower. And they don't like as much depth. Now in here I've got 60 bulbs, probably won't use all of them, but I can just kind of, I'm just gonna just take these and just kind of dump them in there just to make it easy. Now, I will take these. It's a very important to know when you plant your bulbs, put the pointy side up. So you're gonna see these little hairy kind of fairy roots down here on the bottom. And we're just gonna put those down and we're gonna put these up. So I'm just gonna put those all right side up. And I'm just gonna start on the outer edge, work all the way around. We'll just work all the way around and get all these kind of placed. There we go. So now you can see that. Got them all around the edge. Got a couple runaways there. It didn't settle in very well. Um, so now I've got a nice kind of ring around the outside. Um, and the reason that I left the center hollow on this container, now typically I might fill it all in and then just put pansies on top, um, which is what I'm going to do next. But what I am going to add is I'm gonna do another type of container right here on top. And the reason I left the center hollow is because I wanna do just kind of a traditional looking container, which is usually a centerpiece, your thriller, that big, tall kind of centerpiece. And then I'm gonna do pansies around the outside. Now you could do a, a centerpiece and then two different plants here and two different plants on the outside. That's perfectly fine. Um, but what I'm gonna do is kind of keep it simple and I'm gonna have my pansies be my fillers and spillers because pansies will trail a little bit. Um, they don't naturally trail, but as that plant gets bigger, it'll kind of hang over the edges of the side. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna put in is a ornamental kale. So I absolutely love these. Look at this guy. 
And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take off some of these bottom branches here real quick because I don't, I need a little bit of space, uh, space to get my pansies in. So I'm just going to rip these off here and create almost like a little tree out of this ornamental kale. Gives me a little bit of space to plant my pansies underneath. So there we go. Now I'm going to take this out of the pot and now this is going to go right in my center. So now I can dig my hole because I didn't put any bulbs there in the center. I left it nice and empty so I'm just pulling that soil up over top of those bulbs to open up my center here and I don't have any bulbs in there because while bulbs probably could shoot through this, um, I'm trying to eliminate a little bit of that competition. So I am going to take a little bit of the soil off the bottom, not hurting the plant at all, just kind of roughing up the edge of this and then we'll plant our kale right there in the center. All right, so there we go. We got our kale planted right in the center. Uh, let's see, as I kind of look in the camera, it looks like this branch is hanging a little low. So we're gonna take that one off and snap it off. Very, very simple. So now I've got my centerpiece, and now I can just put pansies right around the outside edge. So let's see, I've got a lot of different choices here. I think probably what I'll do is, I've got this really pretty, This is called, let's see if I can find the name on this one, this is called the Coastal Sunrise Mix. And I love how it's got, I always look for small colors that I can find in the plant. So here in this plant, you can see, if you can see in there, there's some veins of kind of purple. You can really see it in that cabbage right here in the front, that ornamental cabbage, see that purple in there? This one's got that same purple striping, it's just a little bit more of an open, taller kale. But it's got that same purple striping in there, and so that is gonna pair very well with this kind of pink purple bloom on this pansy if you can see that. Just awesome, awesome little pansy. And then what you can do, I'm going to show you this with pansies. If you look at pansies, whenever you take it out, um, as you can see I don't have a huge edge here that, to plant on. So what I can do is kind of flare this out. Usually you're going to get three little pansy, pansy plugs in each pot. So what you can do is I'm going to take, I'm going to eliminate some of this extra soil that I have on the bottom. So we're just going to kind of take some of that soil off the bottom and then I'm just going to see where I can find my pansy opening there and I'm just going to take this and open it up just like that. So what I got is a ring of pansies that now I can plant. So you can see that right there. And then we're just going to pop those in right around in a ring like that. Super, super simple. Got myself my, my, my nice edge. And then I've got another one here. We'll do the same thing. Just kind of slightly taking off a little bit of soil there around the bottom. And then I'm just going to take that pansy and just gently with my thumbs kind of pull it apart there. And then what you're getting is you can actually take them apart if you wanted to to separate them, but you can also just keep them in that kind of that ring right there, which is really, really easy to do. And then we're just going to put these in the side. And there we go. And for sake of time, I'm not going to finish this off, but that's basically now you can see kind of what that will look like. Um, and what's going to happen is this kale is going to go all the way through the winter months. It's going to look awesome. It's actually going to get more color on it as we get colder and colder. The pansies will keep blooming. I can keep limbing this up to keep allowing those pansies to kind of fill up. They'll kind of trail over the side, as you can see right there. They're trailing over. And then my bulbs in the spring will shoot up through and it'll just explode with color. And my kale might go. So, you know, if, you're, if your kale starts to flower or something like that, your ornamental kale, if it starts to warm up before those tulips and, and daffodils shoot up, or maybe you just don't maybe like the look, that's why I said you could just put all pansies in here and just fill it up with pansies and let all your bulbs shoot up through there. But I want a kind of a different look. So before the, the, they shoot up, before the tulips and daffodils start to come up in the muscari, um, I might go and take this kale out and just put a little bit of potting soil back over. Because at that point, the pansies will be kind of nice and full and I won't have to worry about it too much. And so I can just go in and take this kale out, put a little bit of potting soil in, let the pansies fill back in and let everything shoot up over the top. But I love this kind of simple look. This is a very easy thing to do in containers around your um, uh, outside um, on the front porch, deck porch patio, out in the landscape. It's awesome, very simple. And again, just kind of looking at that color there and using your pansies as your spiller and are as your spiller and your filler and using this ornamental kale as a um, thriller, this big kind of uh, plant here. So there you go, you can see that.
really easy container, super, super simple, and we're not gonna do a lot of, you know, this is a very uh, symmetrical container. So again, you could take and put, maybe you wanna do, let's see if I've got my heuchera around here somewhere. I love heuchera, I know I had it. Ah, here we go. So you can take a heuchera and put a heuchera on one end, put one on the front and one on the back and put pansies on the side. Very, very simple, very easy to do. You could pop a pumpkin on each side. We're gonna show you how to do that here in a minute. But that's an easy container. I, I, did, I accomplished two different containers there basically. I did the bulbs underneath and then flowers on top. And then I of course created a traditional, very simple container with a centerpiece and my nice pansies around the outside. Very, very easy, very simple. The centerpiece could be a lot of different things. It could be a spruce, it could be a fall blooming camellia. When we do the pansy containers um, in a couple weeks, I will show you those um, so you can check those out. Uh, we'll use a dwarf Alberta spruce, which will transition right into Christmas. Or maybe a Yuletide or fall blooming camellia, which will also get us right into the holiday season as well. Um, but this is a great container. It's gonna last all winter long. Super, super simple. If you wanna put bulbs underneath, I think it's a great option because it's gonna give you that spring color when it comes shooting out of the soil in the spring. And then you can go plant your bulbs all over the, the yard or you can keep them in the container and have them again for next year. Um, so very, very kind of cool way, different thing to kind of think of. And this is a low squatty kind of uh, what they call an azalea pot, um, which I kind of love for fall. It kind of gives you a different look. We've got lots and lots of different styles of clay containers. Um, and I just love terracotta in the fall. It just gives you that fall look. And I'll probably do a couple more terracottas here. Um, so that's just one option there. So let me put this off to the side. And let's move on to another style. So let me just kind of clean up my mess here a little bit. Get my bulbs out of the way. All right. So I think a lot of us have, um, you know, very shady yards. You know, if you live in an established neighborhood with lots of big trees, or maybe you have a, door, uh, a deck porch or patio that's got an overhang on it, um, and so you just don't think you get a lot of sun. Um, a shady container is a great thing to do, and you can do one with a very kind of cool fall look. I'm actually gonna do a small one here. So I love blue pots, and this is a great looking blue pot. This is a ceramic glazed blue pot. Uh, I think a lot of us probably have something similar to this. Maybe it's green, maybe it's beige. It could be any color, really. Um, I do kind of love lighter toned pots in the shade. They do tend to pop up a little bit better, uh, but I love blue, and I think a lot of us have blue pots that we've used uh, for years and years and years. Um, and this is a great one. It's a nice small size, so this could sit up on a little table. Maybe you've got a little bistro table. It could sit on a bench. Um, could sit next to a bench, anywhere on your porch patio, maybe in the shade garden, maybe in your landscape out in the shade. Uh, this is a great container, but I want to kind of create a fall look. I absolutely love heucheras, one of my favorite plants to use, one of my favorites in containers because it just gives you that cool spill effect where it just kind of looks like it falls over the side. Then I'm also going to use the fern. This is an autumn fern. Autumn ferns are awesome. I don't know if you can quite see that, but this new foliage when it shoots out is super, super kind of like maroon, orangey colored. Um, so it gives you that really kind of autumn look to it, um, which is great. And then I'm also gonna use Mondo grass. This is black Mondo grass, which is that really cool dark color. So we're gonna use those three components as our spiller, filler, and thriller. So keep it kind of simple. And again, we'll just take our potting soil. Got enough in there. All right, so I'm not gonna be super symmetrical with this one. I'm gonna have a kind of a bigger plant in the back, which is gonna be my thriller, which I'm gonna call my fern as the thriller. So we're gonna use that kind of in the back portion of this container. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough depth to get down there, made sure I have my drainage hole, I'm using good potting soil. Now you can put other things down at the bottom. A lot of us might use a coffee filter to cover up that hole if it's a bigger hole. Sometimes clay pots have a bigger hole down on the bottom. Um, but you could also use rock if it's a big container that maybe might be plastic and might blow over in the wind. You can use, a, you can use rock down on the bottom. You might even use perlite down on the bottom. Perlite you can just buy by itself. So here I'm just gonna take this autumn fern and I'm gonna position it because of the color that's already showing here on this frond right here is super, super cool. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure that I've got it in the right position that I want it. Then I'm gonna use, now I've got two here that could kind of be classified as spillers and fillers both together. 
Um, I just love it because it adds a lot of color to it. Um, so I've got this really super green fern with these autumn colored uh, new fronds coming out. And then I'm going to use this heuchera. This one's called Fire Alarm. Lots and lots of different types of heucheras out there. Uh, that have different shades of, of purples to uh, the fall kind of orange colors, um, even some lime greens that you'll see out there. But this is a really, really pretty one. It's nice and full. So I'm going to take this and just put this right here in the front and kind of in the side. Very, very simple. So there we go. I mean, just those two together would be gorgeous. But everything that we do in the landscape or even in containers, you typically want to try and keep it in the odd world. Um, odd numbers always are more appealing to the eye. So if you just did two, it might be a little bit off, um, but by putting a third plant in here, um, really, really will make it kind of stunning and more easy on the eye. So it just makes it more appealing to the eye. Um, so this Mondo grass is awesome. And Mondo grass is really cool because you could actually split this up. So if you want to do multiple containers with it, you could, but this is a really, really nice one. So I'm just going to take this and kind of pop it in there. Now what I'm going to do here is kind of force it to kind of shoot out. I'm going to show you this a couple times today of different ways that you can kind of aim the plant in the direction that you want it to go. Um, and then what I love to do with grasses, I absolutely love grasses because you can kind of play with them and you can kind of move them here and there throughout the container. So it's real easy to kind of pop some in and let them kind of mix in. And there you go. All I got to do is fill this in with soil and I've got an amazing container for the shade. And this is gorgeous in the shade. I mean, this fern is going to continue to grow well, um, probably for the next two or three weeks. We're going to get new fronds shooting on it. It's an evergreen fern. The Mondo grass is evergreen and the heuchera is evergreen. So this is going to go all the way into next spring. Um, now, I wouldn't probably want to keep it in this size of container for too, too long. This could grow in this container for probably about a year before I need to go into the ground. But I would say probably next spring I'll go and plant the fern and the mondo grass and the heuchera in my yard because they're perennials and they're going to last year after year after year. So maybe I take the heuchera and the mondo grass out, the black mondo grass, and just let the fern be in the pot through the season. Grow a little bit bigger and then I'll plant it in the fall maybe. But just look at that really pretty color. You've got this awesome fern back here. I've taken my grass and I've kind of worked it through the container a little bit so it's got some popping out over here and over here and it just mixes and it looks like it's been grown like that for a long time. Now you can start with smaller plants and go into a bigger pot and get much, much more longevity out of it. If I planted this in a slightly bigger pot, I could probably get two or three years out of it. Um, but in this small container, it's a great little small piece that you can put anywhere um, on your deck, porch, or patio, or out in the shady part of your landscape. Awesome, awesome kind of fall look. I could even, if I wanted to, take a little pumpkin and just slide my pumpkin in there. There you go. So now I've got a little pumpkin right there in my fall container. I love the white, brings a little bit of bright color into the shade. So now you look at that, that's super, super easy. You can pull the pumpkin out. Maybe I add some lights to this during Christmas. So it transitions very well too. So awesome, really, really cool container. Now you can put pansies in here. You can even do your ornamental kales and cabbages. Um, a lot of us probably have covered porches that, um, that you know, don't get a lot of sun during the summer when the sun is high. But as you'll probably start to notice, the sun gets lower in the sky. So on an east, south, or west facing front porch that might be in the shade during the summer when the sun's straight up above, during this cooler season, as that sun gets lower in the sky, it never really gets real high. So it just kind of stays a little bit more even in the sky, a little bit lower in the sky, which means it might be shooting in through, coming underneath trees, coming underneath the porch or patio. So if you're on an east, south, or west facing, which is three out of four, um, other than north, north is going to get full shade, which this would be perfectly fine in full shade. But if you've got a, a deck, porch, or patio that maybe you want to do a container, that maybe we want to do some of these brighter light plants, um, you can do that because just check out your sun. You're probably getting a little bit more light in there during this time of year and through the winter for, for sure. Um, so there's one option as well. I'm going to put that off to the side. So that's our fall container. All right, so let's do our fall shade container. Now that could just be a shade any time of the year. I just love that heuchera, that fall color, just really shines. All right, clean up my mess here. All right, so next is, of course, mums. I love mums in the fall. There's lots and lots of choices for different types of mums out there. Um, and you can do different ones. You could, I could use my, my garden mum, of course, which is great. Huge amount of color. 
I love these just by themselves, but in a container mixed up. I mean, look at it with that Croton. Look at it mixed with anything. The Celosia here is amazing. So we can go high contrast color. And so maybe we'll use this one. But first I want to use this mum. And these are kind of what we call like a florist mum. Um, this one I think is called Pele. Um, Pele is a very common mum because you see that or that uh, really pretty florist mum, cutting mum is what they might call this. Um, where you get all that yellow striping in there. And actually the color gets even more intense as we get cooler. As the weather gets a little bit cooler, the, the color is just going to get even more intense on that. So I definitely want to use one of these. Um, and because mums aren't extremely long lived as far as their blooms go, um, you definitely um, can plant these in containers and get great color for a certain amount of time. I mean you can see I've got buds here that are still going to bloom. So this is going to last me a while. I might have to do a little bit of deadheading here and there, but I absolutely love that color. So I want to play off of that, which means what kind of color do I see in there that's a little bit more subtle than obviously that bright kind of orange maroon is that yellow. So I'm going to try and pull out some of that yellow. I've got two options. There's many, many options. There's not just two, but I always like to try and think outside the box and think of different things I can do. So I've got this gold mop cypress here, which would be really pretty. Or I've got this grass here. I'm going to not get the name of this grass wrong. I want to say it's, I think it's either a Carex. Yeah, it's Carex. So it's Carex. Carex has this really cool ability to just kind of cascade down the edge of a container. And I think that lime green is just amazing in the fall paired with this. You get that feeling of yellow, but also that lime green. So really, really pretty. So we'll do that one, I think, instead of the gold mop. But gold mop cypress would be a good option. You could do a yellow pansy. You can do another yellow mum. You can do multiple mums together. Um, you might even think outside the box and do something like this thread leaf coreopsis, which is really cool because all these little yellow blooms just kind of dance out there, um, which is awesome in a container. Um, great in the landscape, obviously. It's an amazing perennial comes back year after year, but all these little blooms are going to open up. And then I can go and transplant it into the, into the landscape and use it and have it in my landscape year round. All right, so we've got our two starting plants. Now we need probably one other one. So maybe this would be a good option for my croton. The croton I think will look pretty cool in there. Again, kind of pulling out more of those colors. Now I could use a croton like this, but I've had a croton on my front porch. Brought it in here. <laughs> Doesn't look 100% great, does it? So sometimes this happens. They defoliate a little bit. Um, I think I missed a couple days watering. I was here, you know, not doing my job at home, doing my job here at work. Um, and so this happens to us a lot. And I love these types of plants for containers. So whenever I'm walking around the garden center picking out plants to put in a container, I'm kind of looking for the gnarlier ones, to be honest, because they kind of pop out and do different things. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute when I use this cabbage up here in the front. Um, but again, this is an indoor plant, um, a, a tropical plant. It's only going to take it outside till probably about November uh, 3rd, 4th, somewhere in that time frame, maybe November 15th, depending on when the frost date hits us. Um, but with the mum, it's going to be gorgeous and this really pretty, and this is a perennial grass. So that grouping right there is going to be really, really nice together. So let's get to work on that. And let's see, I'm going to do, to save my back, I'm going to use a plastic terracotta pot. Now we've got these in like a sage green color, a beige color, all of those colors work in the fall season. So you got lots and lots of options with plastic containers um, because they look very realistic and they also save your back a little bit. I mean, I don't know if you can quite see, see this color right here. That's a gray plastic pot, love that. Um, so there's lots and lots of different uh, plastic pots now that look amazing and they're lightweight. So if you're moving them around a lot, they really can save your back a little bit of pain. So again, we'll start with our soil. Make sure we got drain holes, we've got drain holes. They're not too big. I don't need to cover them with anything. And I'm kind of like an always like a two third person. I always go two thirds full in my pot so that I've got plenty of soil to work with. If I need to dig a hole, I've got space to push it. It just kind of gets a lot of the soil in there first. So hopefully all I got to do when I get everything situated, because some of these root balls are different sizes, is all I got to do is fill around the holes. So the first thing I'm going to start with is this amazing croton. <laughs> um, I know it's not the most amazing looking plant in the world, but that's okay. That's going to work perfect for me. It's exactly what I want. I want kind of it kind of sprawled out a little bit and kind of funky in shape. 
uh, because I don't want it to look like it's full and full and bushy. I mean, I could use this one, it would be gorgeous. Um, it's absolutely full and perfect. But sometimes, uh, if you've got plants laying around that you just kind of need to find a home for, um, think about them in containers. They work great in a fall container garden with mixed up plants. So we got that in there. I'm gonna take my mom out. Now be careful with your um, fall, your florist mums. Um, they are a little bit, um, can, it can be a little flimsy sometimes. They can get a little top heavy. So we're just gonna make sure that we're careful with that and not rip it right out of the pot and use our hands to kind of rip it too much. So we're gonna be super, super careful with this. Just take my time, make sure I get it at the right depth here. Let's see what we're looking there. And this is gonna be more of my filler. So that's kind of my filler there, real, real easy. Let's see, we got them at the right depth, looks good. And then, again, this could be the gold mop cypress. That would have looked pretty. This is gonna look amazing in there, just with that little bit of color there. Let's just see what the gold mop would look like, just so I make sure I'm making the right decision. And what I like to do here at the garden center is walk around with a cart and just kind of pick out all my plants and put them on top of the, uh, on top of the cart and just kind of arrange them how I would in my pot. And then that way I can figure out exactly what I wanna put in there. I think I like the, the Carex. This is Everillo Carex. Amazing, amazing plant. Really, really pretty. Love just that trailing habit to it. So it's going to give me lots and lots of color. There we go. Let's see. We need to dig that up just a little bit. Make sure we get them all at the right level. And then I'm going to kind of force it again off to the side there to kind of allow my croton to be seen back here. So again, I'm just kind of manipulating my plants just a little bit, just ever so gently, just so I get them just where I want them to. And then, I think for some color, a pumpkin. Why not? I love putting pumpkins in here. Could be a cabbage or a kale if we wanted to add something different in there. But look at that, that's just an easy, lightweight container. Love this grass. We can kind of, again, manip manipulate it a little bit. And look at this. I can fill in my void back here too with it. So I've got that kind of spot there where my croton had kind of gotten a little wimpy looking. And now look, it doesn't look wimpy at all. It just looks like these two awesome spikes. Wish I had three on it, but again, sometimes you gotta do with it. You gotta do with what you got. Um, but a really pretty container. Very simple again. All I gotta do is fill in all around the, the pot um, with a little bit of soil and this would be done. But that just looks awesome. I mean, you got this amazing mum. And then of course the mum's gonna go and the cronin's gonna go, but I might be able to pull this into a sunroom and enjoy it through Thanksgiving. All of these plants will be fine with a good amount of light indoors. Um, so just keep it moist. I can put a saucer under it. It's in a lightweight pot, so I can move it inside very easily. So this isn't gonna break my back to move this inside. I can get one of those clear or a terracotta saucer, slip it underneath. I can protect my, my floor. I can protect uh, my table that I might put it on. And then you've got this amazing centerpiece that you can use during Thanksgiving. You can use it in your home, around in your decor, all the way through Thanksgiving, all the way through the holiday season. Um, and then the mum, of course, is gonna go and you might take that out and plant it outside. Some florist mums don't come back, so um, be careful with that, but, uh, but that is another option for you. And then of course, we can take the pumpkin out. We've got this awesome grass that I can go plant in the landscape now. Really, really cool planter. So you can see that. Super, super simple, easy. Again, looking at colors. I've got my maroon and my orange and my, and my flowers, which pair perfectly with the croton. I've got the yellow, which then mixes perfectly with my grass and then a little orange pumpkin just to tie it all together in a terracotta pot. This can be done in any container. Super, super simple. And I mean, a lot of your, your neighbors and friends are gonna come over and just say, that's amazing looking, what, how'd you do that? And just by taking an old plant, that maybe kind of it looks like it's a little struggling a little bit and work it right in there. Awesome, awesome idea. Great little container. So we'll put that one off to the side. All right, now we're gonna do one more. Um, I think I've got time for one more. Let's see what time we got. I might even be able to do two, maybe one. We'll see. All right, so I'm gonna use this white pot because I think a lot of us are using more modern colors, you know, whites and grays and black and so, uh, which I absolutely love. Um, you can use a bright color pot. They're great. I love the blues, the oranges, the reds. There's lots and lots of different colors out there, but white really shows off the pot or really shows off the plants. 
because it takes kind of all your eye attention and puts it to the plants because this is just a neutral color. So I'm gonna show you this white pot. It's got this kind of cool ripply edge to it. Really nice container. It's ceramic, it's glazed. Um, so it's gonna last me years and years and years, which is why I love these. Um, I didn't mention that with the terracotta, which I think a lot of people are concerned about terracotta cracking in the winter, which can certainly happen. If you're using them on a porch or patio, you shouldn't have many issues. If you put a saucer underneath them, make sure that you don't leave water in there. Because what happens with clay is it'll absorb moisture on the outside. When it freezes, if we get a really cold day in January or February and it freezes, then it can crack. If you're using them in the landscape, put some bricks underneath them. Something to kind of allow that pot to dry out and keep off that moist soil. When the soil stays moist, then that, again, that clay will absorb that moisture and bring it up into the pot and then it can crack. But glazed containers are great. These are fired twice typically, maybe even three times, depending on the company that we get them from. Um, and you're usually gonna see the glaze go all the way into the inside, so look at that. All the way down, it's really, really nice and protected. It's not all the way to the bottom, but that's fine. If you also, if you feel the inside of your, of your container, of your glaze pot, if it's nice and kind of rough, then you know it's a little bit stronger. If it's a little bit of a smoother coat to it, it might have only been fired twice. This one's probably been fired three times, which means it's super, super durable and very, very strong. Love this pot. I love glaze containers because you're gonna get many, many years out of them. So this is a really pretty one. Okay, so let's figure out where we're gonna put in this one um, and get started. I'm gonna try and get a few more plants in here so we can get away from the threes and a pumpkin. Uh, we'll try and go a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more different. So let's see what we come up with. I've got lots of plants here to choose from, so we've got lots and lots of choices. Of course, to start with soil, I'm gonna use up the rest of this bag. This one I don't really have planned. So actually what's gonna be kind of cool is kind of getting uh, uh, insight onto how you might go around and shop the garden center and think of all the different plants that you might wanna put in one. Um, so you can kind of you know, listen to my mind think and, and think through this a little bit. I definitely know that I wanna use this cabbage. I absolutely love this. And the reason I picked this one again is, look at that, it's kind of funky looking. Perfect for my container. Exactly what I wanted actually. I don't have to manipulate or anything, look at that. It's gonna be able to sit right there. It's gonna look like it's been in there for years. Absolutely amazing, so I definitely wanna use that. Um, and then we're gonna start with that. So that's what I'll usually do, is I'll say, what's, my, what's the plant that I gotta have? I gotta have this guy. So I know what I want, so now I can start to pair everything off of that and use it. And it sometimes, almost always, is gonna be your thriller. Maybe it's a tall grass like this, maybe it's something like that, but you don't always have to, to use that. You can say, this is more of my filler. It's actually gonna be my spiller probably in this container. Um, so it's gonna be kind of my filler and my spiller, but I love that color. I love it with that white pot. I love the size of it, and I just love the angle that it's growing in, which is perfect. Um, so we're gonna use that in here for sure, and then I can start to play everything off of that. All right, so need more soil. We'll just fill this up. About two thirds probably again. And I like to fill my entire container with soil. So I know this is a bigger pot. So some people might be saying, well, why wouldn't you like just maybe put something in the bottom to kind of eliminate the amount of soil you're gonna use? Well, I think it keeps it more consistent. You don't have to worry about anything, you know, happening down in the bottom that you're not aware of. Soil is consistent, so this is going to keep it nice and easy to work with. Um, and there we go. And that's, so that's why I just love to put potting soil all the way through the whole thing. In fact, I think you're going to save money by doing that. So I've got my amazing ornamental kale here. Absolutely stunning. So I'm going to need a little bit more soil because I want to get this right on the edge there so it can just kind of hang over the side. Look at that, I mean, that is awesome. In fact, I'm gonna turn it, because I've got a little bit of a dip here, so this is kind of a cool pot. It's got those up and down curves. So again, you're getting a, a sneak peek into my mind and how I work <laughs> and how I operate, and I think a lot of us do. We don't quite know what we're doing until we do it. Um, and once we find something that we love, then we can start to work on that and we can start to play off of that. But that's, that was where my starting point for sure was gonna be. I love this, I just saw that color, and these, again, these colors are gonna get more and more intense as it gets cooler and cooler outside, so I love that pink color. Um, now, this is a Solosha. Absolutely love this, and that pairs so well with that. So I think I'm gonna definitely have to use that. Um, so we'll go with that Solosha. I could do, this is a uh, Cordyline, um, which is actually fairly hardy. So um, I've actually had one in a container for about two or three years now. 
Um, I brought it in one winter into the garage just to kind of protect it a little bit when it got real cold in February. But these are awesome, awesome grasses. I mean, really, we sell it as an annual, but really it could be a perennial as well. Um, and I think we might be able to tie all of this in here. Oh yeah, I think that's all gonna work. So again, kind of my mind just thinking here. Um, so let's go and take and put this quarter line in. I definitely love that look. We'll put that right in there. And so typically I will put, I'm gonna say that this container maybe is gonna go in an area where you can see it from all different angles. Maybe it's on the front porch, um, on the top step, but you've got some porch behind it, you've got the steps in front of it, so you want it to be kind of really pretty cool looking all the way around. Um, so sometimes like with that shade container, I'll pull up all these containers at the end so you can see them all, but sometimes I'll put my tallest element in the back. Um, this one I might be doing kind of a little bit of a mix. Again, I'm just not quite 100% sure. Um, this is not normally how I would do it. Normally I would be staging all these plants first and figuring out exactly how they're going to go in like you would when you come in and shop. But again, this is kind of unique and we'll just kind of, kind of figure it out as we go along. Put in a little bit more soil back here in the back. Perfect. All right, so I love how that just kind of pushes that plant forward. It allows it to kind of pop in and out and do different things there. So really, really cool. I love that quarter line. Um, if it got really, really cold, I might have to bring this in and protect it a little bit, but at least all the way through probably November, I'm gonna be fine. Um, now this is a Celosia. This is a really, really pretty one. Um, nice and full. I love it. It's got that kind of that maroonish color foliage, which is going to tie in perfectly with this quarter line, and it's going to pull that pink of the bloom into the cabbage there, into that ornamental kale. And I keep saying ornamental kale or cabbage because everybody kind of keeps changing their mind. I believe this is an ornamental kale, even though it looks like a cabbage, but I, it's, it's up to you, whatever you want to call it. If you come in and ask for ornamental kale or cabbage, we're going to know exactly what it is that you're asking for. So let's see how that's looking. I like it. I'm actually gonna make that one probably stand up a little bit more and up. Oh, see, I just realized my plant is a little bit lower on this side, a little bit taller here. So I want the taller side towards the center. I want that lower side there towards the outside. And there we go. Now, as I mentioned, that looks amazing just by itself, right? That is really cool, kind of that purpley kind of look. Uh, this could be moly grass. Moly grass gets a little pink bloom. Um, there's so many, so many plants to choose from. Um, but here we go. We've got this going on now. I've got this whole empty backside. So let's see how much more we can fit in here. I think I'm going to do, I could do a pansy. So I've got this kind of maroon pansy, which would pair nicely with this. That's not a bad option. Uh, let's see if there's anything else around here that I might want to use. Um, I love... This is another type of Carex. So that Carex that I used before, this one's got a white stripe in it. So this one's got kind of white edges, so it's variegated. I like this. I think I'm going to use this. Kind of also, kind of, instead of putting, I wouldn't put it right next to this grass because I got a grassy look here, so I'm going to put it over here. It's really going to tie in nicely with this white pot. Really pretty. And again, just kind of allowing it to kind of pop up here and there. Love grasses because they're just so easy to work with. So there we go. You can see that now. Look at that. I mean, just from that angle, you've got tons and tons going on here. And I still got a hole here. Um, I could do Dusty Miller. I could do a pumpkin. Um, I think I'm going to do, let's see if I've got, I don't want to do pansies because I'm going to do those in a couple weeks. I think I'm going to use this Dusty Miller. So Dusty Miller is an awesome, awesome plant. Gives you that kind of silver foliage. So that's going to tie in nicely with my, my ornamental cabbage. It's going to give you that same kind of look. Also works well with my variegated grass. So we're going to use that. I think that'll be something different we haven't used yet. Perfect. That worked out well. See? Just by, all, just by looking at those colors, and so as I spin this around, you'll see I've got grasses, I've got blooms, I've got, and I didn't really stick to any kind of formula here. I mean, yes, I've got spillers and fillers and thrillers in here, but really I kind of went with the purple and white. Uh, I got the white pot, so I've got this grass over here that has that white stripe in it. The Dusty Miller has that kind of silvery white appeal to it as well. And then, of course, I went with the maroons and purples. So you can just see that container. So this is a little bit out there. It's 
a little bit different, but again, kind of th I want you to think outside the box. So I really want to kind of push you to say there's lots and lots of different options here. And I think that's a really cool one. So I don't really, that really turned out pretty well. Now, of course, you could use grasses with a pumpkin, with some pansies. You can keep it very, very simple. We did some simple ones. We did some bulbs. I got lots of ideas here. So let's actually pull these all back up here together so we can kind of see everything as I kind of arrange everything. And we can talk about all the different things we can do here. And I'll leave my croton so you can see it. Get this off to the side here. All right, one more over here, I think. All right. So let me get this arranged so I can actually see you guys. Talk about some different elements that we can actually add to kind of make these maybe a little bit different looking if we want to. All right. So, of course, adding pumpkins is easy. Add some pumpkins to your decor here, add some pumpkins to your look. Very, very simple to add some different colors and different arrangements to it. Um, so one option is, let's say this container we did with just pansies. I didn't put the kale in there. I just put the pansies in and it's kind of low or maybe it's just my mum pot. I just put a mum in a, in a, in a, a terracotta pot. Let me show you that. Let's do it that way. Slide this out of the way. Again, just kind of different ideas to kind of help you think outside of the box. So let's say we've got this mom. We've just slipped it in here. What else might we want to add to it? How about a flag? Super, super simple. Get your flagpole, put it in your pot, stick it right down in your mom, and then we can hang a nice little flag from it. So that's an awesome way of adding a little bit of height, a little bit something different. Can't quite see it, it's off the camera there a little bit, but that's all you would have to do is just put a nice little flag, a little welcome flag. I love flags in pots, kind of add some interest, adds a little bit of height, and it helps kind of direct your eye to, hey, check out the show that's going on right here. I've got my flag, maybe it's a welcome flag, uh, maybe it's a fall, maybe it's a Halloween flag. So lots and lots of different options. I love a flag in a container, it looks really, really cool. Very simple to do. All right, got a couple other ideas that I want to share with you on how you can kind of use different things that maybe are a little outside of the box. So I mentioned the corn stalk earlier, right? So I've got this kind of cool container. I mentioned the corn stalks. Get a corn stalk, use your pruners, and do a little work on it. So what I'll do is actually take, there's plenty of these on there, these leaves. Look at that, really, really cool. So I'm going to go and cut a couple of these out. Don't need many. I'm going to take this pumpkin out and I'm just going to slide some of these leaves in here. Just to kind of create a little bit of a bed. Now you can use wheat straw if you wanted to. Wheat straw would look great. And there we go. So you're just adding another little dimension to your container there with that little bit of that straw, that fall color. Again, wheat straw would look awesome, even pine straw. You can bend these down so we can kind of take and manipulate these a little bit. See if I can get that one to kind of bend down there. And there you go, look at that. So just by using some of the things that you already have around your fall decor, you can add another little element to your container. Awesome, very easy to do. Um, and then the other thing is, actually I'm gonna do it right here in this container so we can kind of wrap up is, a lot of people with their Indian corn, and if you get your Indian corn from here, or sorry, not your Indian corn, your corn stalk, um, you'll have corn right here on these stalks. So these corn stalks have corn on them. So you just rip it, you just open it up here, and you'll feel them in there. And just use your pruners. Sorry, I probably should pull this over so you can see it, but I'm gonna try and do this kind of quick. So look at that. I've got a piece of corn right there 
And this harvest corn will look awesome. And I'm just going to use that kind of all those threads in there. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that. And I'm going to use that and we'll just tuck it in right there. We'll just tuck a piece of that in there with our pumpkin. And there we go. We've got another element to it. And I've got lots of corn on these. So I've got lots of, of, of that fall kind of harvest corn um, right there on my corn stalks. I can use that. I could use wheat straw. Again, pumpkins are awesome. You can get a little pick. You could, use, um, you could use your flags. So think outside the box and think about all the different things that you can use to add to your containers that are just going to make them amazing. So we've talked about a simple kind of traditional container, a centerpiece with some pansies around it, maybe symmetrical, maybe two different plants on each side, two different plants on that side, planting bulbs in containers. Think about that. Throw some bulbs down on the bottom. Let them come up. Just look at your planting depths on the bulbs. Very, very easy to do. Um, think about your fall colors. Maybe use a plant that maybe you might not think is great. Maybe it's headed towards the trash can, maybe. Let's try and use it in a different way. So this is a great way to use it, is to kind of put it in a container because you're going to be able to fill it up with other foliage and other different types of blooming plants. Awesome container. We put a lot of different things into this one. Think about the shade. If you've got a shade, shady area, you can think about different containers for the shade. Ferns and heucras and a white pumpkin, and you've got an awesome, awesome, awesome container. And then again, of course, think outside the box with this amazing container here with all the whites and purples and maroons and silver, Dusty Miller. Really, really cool. I really like the way this one turned out. This one really, really showed up well. It's all started with this guy right here. I knew I had to have it, and so then I just started playing off of that and saying, where are all my colors? Where am I going with this? Started with that, looks awesome. So it turned out really, really well. Really excited about that one. Um, so lots and lots of different ideas out there. Fall is an amazing time to get out in the yard and work on some of these containers. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something. Uh, spillers, thrillers, fillers, super, super easy. But it doesn't always have to be that way. It could just be, I found a color scheme. I'm going to run with it, and I'm going to do something amazing. Um, and think outside the box and, and just go for it. Uh, it's an amazing time to get out in the yard and work in it. Um, and think about your containers and think about uh, adding some of that fall look to your deck, porch, or patio. So hope you enjoy this. If you've got any questions, I'm going to come over and answer them now. I hope you all have a great weekend. We hope to see you here at McDonald Garden Center. If you're watching from around the country, uh, go and check out your local nurseries. They are amazing, amazing places, and they have a wealth of knowledge and can help you find lots of different things. We've got pumpkins. We've got mums. We've got gourds. We've got wheat straw. We've got corn stalks. We've got lots and lots of different types of color. Lots of pumpkins have come in, gourds. So it's an amazing time to start decorating for fall, my favorite time of the year. So hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day, everybody, if you're leaving. If you're sticking around for your questions, I'm going to come around and answer those right now. Have a great day. All right. Get a sip of my McDonald water here. Well, hello, everybody. Now that I can see everybody, Brenda, Sally, uh, Amy said, Elizabeth said, coming tomorrow. Hi, everybody. Hi, from Norfolk. Low temps, can the croton handle? So, Karen, what low temps can the croton handle? We really don't want it to get below uh, 50 on them. Um, they actually can take a little bit of that lower temperature pretty well. Um, but if, if it starts to get below 50, I might want to bring it in, uh, at least bring it into the garage if it's just going to be one night. Frost occurs when the temperatures get below 40 degrees at night. So if it's below 40, there's no wind and no rain in the forecast, then we're potentially going to have a frost. That typically won't happen until November. So I'm going to get a good month, month and a half out of that container, um, if not longer. So again, I think that's a great one because if the mom starts to go, I can take it out, put a new mom in. And then I can bring it inside during the fall season. Or that croton wasn't heading anywhere very good. <laughs> so um, at least I got some, some use out of it for a couple months there before um, I decide to either try and rehab it or get a new one like that nice big full one that I had. Um, so, so, so Brenda said something pulls up every one of our bulbs. Um, so try daffodils, Brenda. Daffodils typically nobody messes with. If you're trying tulips um, and you've got some sort of critter out there that, that loves them, uh, they'll eat tulips and crocus and a lot of other ones. Um, but daffodils, typically nothing messes with. Also hyacinths, a lot of things don't mess with um, hyacinths. And in fact, humans sometimes get an allergic reaction to them. Um, but try daffodils. Daffodils, really typically, not many animals or critters out there like to mess with them. 
Crystal said these videos are great. I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Michelle said, yep, squirrels love digging up bulbs, especially tulips. Um, Gail, thank you for the nice comment. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, so Gina said, with potting bulbs, can you leave them in the pot after they have bloomed, or do you have to remove them and re replant them each year? So I put a lot in there. Um, if you wanted to leave them in there for multiple years, give them a little space to expand um, because bulbs multiply over, over the, the time frame over each year. Um, and so you don't, if I packed them in there that tight, I typically wouldn't leave them like that. Um, so that container that I did, after they were done blooming in the spring, even though I know they've got foliage on them, you can still plant them. Or I could just take that container, put it in the backyard, let it be, not even think about it, and then plant them in the fall um, when you typically would plant bulbs, daffodils, and tulips um, right now. So um, you can do it two different ways. If you plant them with the foliage on there, you can watch them and kind of see if they need a little bit of help, a little bit of, of, of bulb tone or uh, um, uh, bone meal might help, uh, something that's going to help with the phosphorus side. And then, of course, you can water them if you need to. Um, so you really got two different options there. If I were going to do it for longevity to keep the bulbs in there consistently and just kind of keep putting pansies on top, um, then um, I would probably space them out a little bit just to give them a little bit of space to kind of grow. And then Ann said, would you use bulb tone fertilizer if using potting soil in a, in a container? Um, yes, you can use bulb tone. I didn't mention fertilizer, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, any of these containers, I would probably go ahead and feed. I would feed it with our green leaf fertilizer, one of my favorite ones. Um, we've got our organic green leaf, and I've also got our traditional green leaf, which is typically what I'll use if I'm using pansies at all. Um, so that container that I did with the ornamental kale and the bulbs underneath, I would have put green leaf in there because pansies are pretty heavy feeders. Um, and so I want to keep those blooming all winter long, and that, that'll help feed them. Um, Ruth says, beautiful, Mike. Thank you, Ruth. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you again through our webinar. Um, I hope you will show us that pot in the spring when the bulbs are in full bloom. I will try, uh, unless it sells. So, <laughs> um, what is that deep reddish plant? It's with the fern. So that was. See if I can get this for you. Now you can see this container up close. I love this container. This is really pretty. Um, so this right here, that reddish plant, is called a heuchera or a coral bells awesome awesome plant it's a perennial it might get a little crispy when we get extremely cold temperatures which rarely happens anymore um, it might get a little crispy in, in the dead of winter um, it might get a little crispy in the in the in the full su in the, the heat of the summer but in the spring and fall it is absolutely amazing and they're basically evergreen so if you get a little bit of crispiness here and there they actually shoot up with these little kind of dainty blooms that dance around um, in the mid uh, late, late spring early summer time frame um, but they come in a lot of different colors. I just love this plant. Absolutely love it. Um, and they're perennial. So, in fact, I kind of classify them as an evergreen. So that's what that is. And then a couple of people were helping me out saying, it's heuchera, it's heuchera. And yes, heuchera or coral bells. So a lot of people used to call them coral bells. Heuchera has kind of become a more popular name for it. Um, so let's see, we've got, uh, please comment on the use of hellebores in fall winter pots. So Patricia, great, um, thought there is hellebores, uh, for winter containers. I will probably use those when we do winter containers a little bit later. Um, so we're going to do, we did our fall containers now. I'm going to do containers with pansies in a couple weeks in a couple weeks and then we'll probably do a Christmas or a winter container and the reason I mention that is if you want hellebores the best time to find them at garden centers is when they're starting to kind of bloom or when they're getting closer to blooming and so right now you're not going to get a huge selection of hellebores uh, which I wouldn't have not put them in here I mean they would have been great and they would have bloomed uh, maybe I'll try and find some for the pansies in a couple weeks uh, when I do those but yes hellebores are amazing amazing plants uh, a very, very tough, durable plant. When we get more in, which hopefully usually is around November, um, so we've got about a month, maybe we'll get them a little bit sooner this year, um, but hellebores are awesome fall, winter plants into spring. Uh, really, really durable plants. Go Mob Cypress, is that available in most places throughout the country? I'm in Denver. Uh, I would think so, Lauren, um, because it's a conifer. 
Um, it, it should be able to grow in Denver. Um, you should have a huge selection of conifers up there in Denver um, uh, because you've got obviously cold winters and that's going to be kind of conifer country. I would think that you would probably maybe if you don't have gold mop cypress, you should have a golden colored cypress of some of some type. Uh, maybe if it's, maybe it's an arborvitae. Uh, um, maybe it's a whipcord arborvitae that has the, the gold color. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of different choices out there. We're not in kind of really true conifer country. We don't have a lot of conifers in the area that do very well. We get pretty warm in the summer. In Denver, you have a huge selection of them. Um, I would be surprised if you couldn't find a gold mop cypress or golden thread leaf cypress is kind of the two different names that they use. But they are awesome in containers, awesome in the landscape. I mean, they get about three by three, four by four in the landscape. So amazing, amazing plant. I would think you could find something similar to that in Denver. Uh, so Lauren said, what is the grass again? Um, I'm assuming you're probably talking about maybe this one, this red one. It's called a cordyline. Um, well, I can't remember if it has a specific name other than that. It, it, we sell it as an annual. It's kind of like the red spike. Uh, that's also a cordyline. There's lots of different types of cordylines out there. Um, I think a lot of us think cordyline and say it's tropical. It's an indoor plant. Um, but this, if you're thinking of this grass right here, cordyline. If you're thinking of this grass over here, this lime colored, or even that white and green variegated grass that I used in this container as well. Those are Carex, and Carex is an evergreen um, perennial grass. Um, they can actually take a fair amount of water, so if you got a moist area, but they can grow. I, this one I love in, in a little bit of shade. It just brightens up a shady area, but it can take full sun too. They're very, very versatile. Carex and Juncus and Acorus are all kind of these perennial grasses um, that, do, do, that do very well. Um, so that's what those grasses are. Uh, I hit on all three of them, quarter line, similar to a red spike. Um, and then we've got the variegated Carex and the Everillo um, uh, chartreuse green Carex. So Deanna said, do you put some water in as you plant each pot? Plant, not each plant. So what I will do is I'll finish these off when, I, when we finish up this webinar. I'll put a little bit of soil in there, probably a little bit of, of plant food for sure. Um, and then I'll take them and get them nice and watered in. Um, it's raining today, so I might even just put them out in the rain and let them get some natural water. Uh, but I will finish these off for sure, put a little bit of soil around them, and then get them kind of settled in with a little bit of a, a good drink. The nice thing about watering your containers, I didn't mention watering, so that's a good question, um, is, is in the fall season, we don't have to water as much. You could probably be as good as maybe one every, every third or fourth day of watering. Uh, just check, you've got the best tool right here on your hand. Use your finger, kind of stick it down in the pot. If the soil in the top two or three inches is dry, you need to water it. Uh, but let it go on a little bit more of a wet dry cycle. Uh, we don't have a lot of heat. We don't have a lot of evaporation occurring. So it's a great thing that you don't have to water your containers as heavily as you would in the summer. In the summer, a container, you might have to water every day, uh, depending on the plant and where it's located. Oh, and Mondo grass. So <laughs> uh, maybe that was the other one. I forgot about that one. Somebody mentioned the Mondo grass. That's that black colored grass. That one um, is, is a great grass as well. I use lots of grasses. I love grass. Um, Yes, Everillo Carex. So Lauren, Everillo Carex is the type of Carex, this one over here, this kind of chartreuse green colored Carex. All right, so Linda said these, um, is it for outside? So um, that was one question. Whoop, I scrolled down too far. So all of the ones that I did today are kind of for outside. Now, any of these you probably could bring inside if you wanted to. Um, if I were going to do an inside container for fall, then I might use the Croton for sure. Sorry, wrong shoulder. Croton uh, would be great indoors with that florist mum. Um, so like I mentioned, this one could come inside for that kind of that fall decor. Uh, but there's lots and lots of indoor plants. Next week is houseplant week. So we're going to be talking about houseplants all week. So we'll be doing a, a webinar on Wednesday and Friday all about houseplants. Um, so maybe I'll make up a little container there for fall. Uh, but yes, you can do, there, there's a lot of assortments of different colors. You get the maroons and the chartreuse lime greens. Um, you get the mums, you get some bloom power, you get orchids. I mean, the list goes on and on about what you could do for indoor combo containers, whether it's either in a basket or in a pot. Succulents come into play. So lots and lots of choices there for inside. Most of these I designed for outdoors um, is kind of what I was going for there. So Linda said, um, 
do they come back each year? So a lot of these plants do. A lot of what I used was perennials. Um, some obviously won't. Um, so like the, the ornamental cabbages and kales, the pansies, those won't, the celosia won't. So this one won't, um, but a lot of them will. Um, a lot of them are perennials, and so you can either use them in the yard or use them in your containers next year. Is it too early to drop ornamental cabbage into pots or window boxes? I know it's been cooler, but wondering. Uh, so Kristen, no, it's not too early. Uh, come in and get them is what I usually would tell you because actually they will be harder to find if you wait a little bit longer. So Kristen, if you're looking to get some ornamental cabbage and, and kale, um, definitely I would say go for it. Yeah, it's going to be warm. I think this weekend I saw maybe an 80, but then after that it cools back down again. So if you're local, Kristen, I would definitely uh, see if you can jump on that pretty soon because they tend to kind of get all bought up. And then about the November time frame, which is when I would really probably recommend planting them, you probably can't find them. So come in as soon as you can and get some of those. At least over the next couple weeks, we should be pretty well stocked. Uh, but plants are flying out of here this year. Um, so if you're, if you're interested, right now we've got mums and pansies and ornamental cabbage and kale. So it's still a great time to plant. Uh, great time to come in and get them. I love the idea of planting bulbs under pansies. Eleanor, it's awesome. It's amazing in the landscape. It's awesome in containers. Just put some pansy over the top, stick a flag in it if you want to, put a little bit of decoration in there if you want to, but then just let those tulips and daffodils and muscari or whatever you want to use, there's lots of choices, just kind of come in and fill it up in the spring. It'll be awesome. Uh, if you take bulbs out of the container you mentioned, you could plant them in the yard. Did you mean you can plant them in the yard in the spring after blooming? I thought bulbs had to be planted in the fall. Yes, so Patricia, good point. Um, I, I kind of hit on it a couple times. Um, yes, bulbs definitely are going to do better if you plant them in, in, in the fall. When they're dormant, they go through the cool season uh, and then they bloom in the spring. Tulips and daffodils specifically. Uh, and then there's a whole other group of bulbs um, in, in, the, in the spring that you plant for summer blooms. But um, if these are growing and you actively take them out and plant them, it's still going to be okay. We carry lots of blooming bulbs um, in the spring, so you can come in and get tulips and daffodils um, in little pots and you can plant those in the ground if you want to. Um, so you can still do it. Um, it's not the recommended time frame, but it's still possible. So if you wanted to go ahead, after they're done blooming, they still have their foliage on them, then if you want to go ahead and take that pot and get them into the ground, you can do it then. If you don't want to, if you want to wait till the fall, then just like I said, stick that pot somewhere, maybe in a slightly shaded location so you're not having to water it a whole ton. Uh, make sure the drain hole stays uh, cleared so that water can go through it, doesn't rot your bulbs out, and then plant them in the fall. It's kind of a personal preference. Probably you're going to think about it more in the spring, so I'd go ahead and do it in the spring. I, I think you'll be fine with it. Bulbs are pretty low maintenance, pretty easy plants. Um, what are your favorite fall grass thrillers for sun? Ooh, that's a tough question. I've got so many favorites. Um, so I love Hamlin. In fact, I think I grabbed a Hamlin. So here's Hamlin. This is Penstemon Hamlin. Uh, love the little kind of tiny plumes on the top of it. Really pretty, just kind of green grass, very durable. Awesome, awesome grass. So that's a good option. Um, probably my absolute favorite of all the grasses is the mooly grass, the pink mooly grass. Uh, it's just amazing when it blooms in the fall with those pink plumes uh, that you can't really see at the height of the day. But when the sun starts to set and the, that sun comes through the plumes, it just glows. It's amazing. It just lights up. Uh, so probably pink mooly grass is my favorite one. Um, I think it's just one of the, the best fall grasses. All right, so Kristen said, I have a green spike from summer in all my pots with sweet potato vine. Of course, the vine doesn't last past November 1st. The spike lasts all winter into the next season. Is it too cluttered for a small mum and cabbage? Will I damage the root of the spike um, or, uh, or sweet potato? No. So Kristen, great option. Um, and I forgot to mention that. Um, if you've got some containers that maybe your petunias have kind of fizzled or million bells uh, or some of your other blooming annuals, but you've got some sweet potato vine, which is that gorgeous chartreuse color, uh, use it for sure. Lismachia is awesome. Um, Creeping Jenny, Lismachia. There's lots of other things that you might have already that still look good. Then yes, go for it, Kristen. Stick a mum in there. Stick a pumpkin. Stick a, you know some pansies in there. You shouldn't hurt it too bad. Just be gentle. Um, your green spike, especially if you've had it for a couple years, just be gentle around the roots and make sure that you don't damage it too much. Um, and then probably what I would do is throw a little bit of, of, of fertilizer in there, a little bit of plant food. Kristen, 
I would do Biotone Starter for you because you've got existing plants in there that have a root system. This is a starter fertilizer. It's a little bit lighter on the food side, but it's got mycorrhiza and beneficial bacteria that are gonna do amazing things for the root system of your, of your spike. So this is a great option to put in for your containers, especially if you're worried that you might be damaging the root system. I definitely recommend it. If you're transplanting something, every, anytime you kind of hurt the root system a little bit, you know, I'll probably add some of this into all of, the, of these pots. This is just an amazing thing to put in with it. Uh, so hopefully that helps you. But yeah, I say go for it. Definitely keep some of those plants going. You're right, the sweet potato vine's not gonna last forever, but it'll last a little bit longer. Um, and your spike, you've had it probably for a couple years now. So Deborah said, happy Friday. I want to know what the weather is going to be on Tuesday there, making a road trip to you. Uh, I don't know. I'll look it up for you and I'll, I'll go on um, to another question while I pull that up for you. Um, of course, I just use the weather app, but Deborah, I will find out for you. Oh, so Kristen answer, but it looks like high uh, 78, 50 chance rain, slightly windy, of course, could change. Uh, so thank you, Kristen, for, for replying to that. Um, Elizabeth said, Amy said, love this. Becky said, great seminar. Ann said, thank you. Teresa, uh, let's see. Jerry, they all look great. How long will pansies last in the fall? Temps. So Carmen, pansies in this area go all the way till spring. Best plants you can get. Oh, I don't have any right here. Uh, but I'm going to be doing all, a whole t webinar on pansies for our pansy week, for our pansy party. Uh, it's uh, October, I think, 7th, 8th or 9th, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, at least October 8th, I think, might be when it starts. Um, but we'll have lots of emails about it. But uh, uh, Carmen, if you're in Hampton Roads area, it is the one true flower that will bloom from now all the way until March and April. Um, and then you plant your petunias or your begonias or whatever it might be in the summer that you want to do for summer color. But pansies are going to give you tons of color. Even if there's snow on the ground, you might see pansy blooms pick, uh, uh, popping out of the snow. So uh, Carmen, you'll love pansies. They're awesome. They just make you smile. Um, Gina said, thank you. Patricia, thank you. Becky, hi from River News. Um, great ideas. Karen said, thanks for all the great info and answers. Beautiful combinations. Thank you. Um, so Carolyn has already had three frost warnings. That is early in Falkier County. So that's crazy how cool it has gotten this year, isn't it? But it's awesome. It's awesome weather. Uh, you just might want to go more pansy heavy, uh, something that you know you got a little bit more uh, success with there. Um, uh, as you probably will get a frost before we do here on the beach. <laughs> um, Becky said, great ideas for the sh shade. Awesome. My front porch is hard to grow anything. Yep, I know sometimes it can be. Putting some lavender out, is it too cold? So Diane, the, the lavender can take it chilly. Um, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, lavender can take it very cold. Um, but uh, what you wanna do is just make sure that it doesn't get too wet. That's usually the problem with lavender here any time of the year is the moisture level. Um, it likes it kind of dry. So think like Tuscany, Italy, um, that kind of clay, you know, that I had never been there, but I assume it's very, you know, hilly, lots of good drainage, clay soil, clay pottery, and lots of lavender and rosemary. Um, and so those plants just like a little bit more of an arid uh, temperature and the humidity here is typically what causes problems in the summer but also the amount of moisture and the lack of heat that we have in the winter. So that is one that I would probably plant in my all-purpose potting soil. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna be perfectly fine through the cooler weather. You won't have a problem with it at all. It's evergreen, it should make it through the winter perfectly fine. So Carolyn said, try hiding your tulip bulbs just under your daffodil bulbs for sure. If you put your, your tulips down about like the six inch, put your daffodils about the five inch, uh, just kind of kind of layer them in there together, then the daffodils should prevent your tulips from being eaten because no animal likes daffodils. Not that I know of at least. Um, so Warren said, when is the best time to plant tree in the ground, spring or fall? So fall is the most amazing time to plant any tree or shrub um, because we don't have a lot of heat. There's a longer time frame before summer hits. Uh, this is when roots develop. So the soil is still warm enough for the roots to take hold. You're not gonna get a lot of top growth, so it's not gonna require a lot of watering. Um, but this is when roots develop is in the fall. It puts all its energy into push, pushing roots in. Um, so by the time summer hits, it's established. So Warren, great time to come in and plant trees, shrubs, perennials, any of those things that are gonna be in your ground for a while. Um, Wendy said, love them, love your pots. Are florist mums more susceptible to cold temperatures than garden mums? Um, no. So garden mums um, are, are going to you know, stop flowering around the time we have a frost typically too. Uh, you might get a little bit later after that. Um, florist mums are going to be a little bit 
uh, more in the same kind of, maybe maybe like a little bit warmer. So florist mums typically, sorry, I keep pointing over this shoulder because it looks like it's there. Um, florist mums like the pele mum back there in the background. Um, what I usually tell people is those have been hybridized to give you kind of that different look, um, which are great. Um, but a garden mum is designed for really to be in the ground, to be in the landscape, or to be in containers. I know a lot of us throw them away. That's perfectly fine. Um, but, but the garden mums are really designed for the landscape. A florist mum, like this pele mum planted on the ground, may or may not come back. So typically, I would say give it a shot. What sometimes I'll do is I'll just cut it back, leave it in the pot, put my pot off to the side, uh, maybe in a, in a shady place, and see what happens in the spring. If it starts to leaf back out, then maybe we'll see what happens. I will tell you the color will definitely be slightly different. Um, that coloration comes from uh, controlling light and controlling the, the temperature uh, that it blooms in. So as it actually gets cooler, the intensity of that color should get better. Um, so again, it kind of all depends on the length of light and the temperature. Uh, but those are not as hardy as your garden mums for sure. Uh, Priya said, hi, lovely video. I live in the Caribbean whereby it's really hot. I planted some elephant bulbs. The stalk is really long. What are some great plants to, uh, that can cooperate with the contrast with these in pots? So elephant ears are awesome plants, amazing. We grow them here in this area as well. Um, so lots of, so is it the, my question might be, is it a maroon or a green leaf elephant ear? If it's a green leaf, then go with something maroon if you can. You know, find something that's got that kind of maroon color, maybe some celosia. If you're, sorry, did it again. Maybe some celosia with this really color, this really dark colored leaf um, would be really, really pretty. Um, you've got lots and lots of options there. I would go contrast. I typically go contrast in the fall. I know I went all kind of pinks and purples and maroons in this pot, um, but I love contrast and that's what I did there with that chartreuse lime green, the crotons with lots of different colors, and then that mum adds a lot of contrast. So I would say if it's a maroon elephant ear, then maybe I go something green or uh, chartreuse, or maybe if you can find some mums or something that you can plant in there that give you a little bit of that color. Um, you could probably do uh, marigolds down there. You probably got marigolds, which give you a lot of fall color and probably last all the way through the winter for you. Um, so I think you've got a, different, a couple different options, but I go contrast. Look for some contrast colors. That elephant ear is going to kind of scream tropical. So I try, if you're trying to go Priya with a fall kind of look, a fall container, get a pumpkin. I mean, I'm sure you can get some pumpkins down there. Put a pumpkin in there and then add some different colors, whether it's with, uh, you know, different types of foliage color um, or maybe just different textures as well. So hopefully that helps. All right, so Deb said, how much sun can coral bells take? So I really prefer them in a little bit of shade. Um, so I would say afternoon shade, morning sun is fine. Um, all day shade is, is, is okay as well, as long as it's getting light. Um, it, you know, but what I mean by all day shade is you don't need a, a candle or you don't need a, a flashlight to be able to see in the area. You're still getting light, natural light. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they, they don't like a lot of hot afternoon sun. And what I'm really talking about there is the summer. Right now, if you're doing a container, yeah, you can plant these heucheras out in full sun right now. So if you're doing a pot and you want to use that heuchera, I'm going to put this here so I can keep pointing at it. If you want to use this heuchera or coral bells out in full sun uh, in the fall, go for it. it. It loves these cooler temperatures. The sun's not hot and we don't get as hot as we do in the summer. It's going to be fine. But make sure in the summer that this plant is being protected. But I just love it because you don't get a lot of color like this in the shade. So that's why I love that one in the shade. But yeah, it, right now through into the spring, you can definitely um, grow them in full sun. Betty Lou said, what is the bright red mum called? So that's called a pele mum. Florist, pay, or sorry, florist, a florist mum, but also a pele mum. I'm going to pick a flower off so you can see just how amazing this bloom is. Look at that. So it's really kind of orange, red with yellow with that lime green center. Again, all those colors we're pulling out of the croton and that. Just awesome, awesome bloom. So really, really pretty. But Pele Mum is what that one's called. Um, so Carmen, you asked the question, uh, how long will those pansies last till frost? Through frost. You know, even in extremely cold winters, I mean, if we're down in like the 15 to 20 degrees, you're not going to lose your pansies. They might not bloom as much, but they'll continue to last and then they'll bloom like crazy in the spring. So frost won't kill pansies. All 
All right, so Wendy said, watering. After one of your earlier videos, I bought a water meter and used it frequently with my summer pots. Now I can avoid stressing my plants with overwatering. Uh, so thanks. So I'm glad that worked. So Wendy, yes, you can get a, a moisture meter, which helps very easily kind of figure out how your moisture is, especially for indoor plants. We definitely would recommend that. A finger is a great tool as well. So just, you know, stick your finger down there. If it's dry on the top two to three inches, then you definitely are gonna to want to uh, water, but a moisture meter will help take the guessing game out of it as well. You just put the moisture meter in there, it'll, it has a little gauge and it'll say wet, dry, or right in the middle. So it kind of does kind of take the guess, uh, guesswork out. So Kim said, um, can you play this again? It wouldn't let me until now. So Kim, if you're still listening, uh, we will, as soon as we finish this video, it'll go back up on our Facebook page. And then um, of course we will, um, um, post this to our webinars um, on, our web, on our website. So if you go to mcdonaldgardencenter.com, scroll down a little bit, you'll see a little webinar link. Click that button and it'll go to all of our videos. So all these webinars that we've been doing over the past year um, will all be in there. So there's a, becoming quite a big library in there. Um, Jenny said, you are so talented, wealth of knowledge. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. I uh, couldn't have done it without the great people here. I mean, they have taught me so much. I've been here for 17 years now, so I've learned a lot. Uh, Brenda, they look so good. Favorite is the white pot with the cabbage and kale. That one turned out well. And that's the one that I didn't even plan for. I just kind of grabbed some plants and I knew that I had some color arrangements there, but that one did turn out pretty cool. I'm gonna turn that one just so, just love that cabbage right there. That's just amazing looking. That one did turn out well, thank you. Um, <laughs> Kim said, just listening to this part, learned a lot, good. Uh, do you have pink dogwood trees? I don't know, that's a good question. We did get some dogwoods in recently. I think they were just the regular white dogwood. So um, I can check, Deborah. Um, I will check um, our, our, I'll run out on the sales yard and check here in a minute. And then I'll uh, reply to your message here as soon as I can. So as soon as I find out, I don't wanna misquote and say yes. I know we got some dogwoods in the, yesterday, the other day. They look gorgeous. I just can't remember if they were white or pink. Um, I didn't look that close. Uh, so Deb said, when should you apply the bonide tree and shrub? And can that be used on roses? So Deb, I'm not sure what the bonide tree and shrub is. Um, if, it's a, um, if it's an insecticide, then yes, you can apply it um, really pretty much anytime. Just read the label. It should tell you um, on how long it lasts. That's probably typically the question that, that most people have is, is it a systemic or is it an ornamental or is it, for, um, or is it a topical spray? Um, so depending on exactly what that is that you're referencing there, Deb, um, then yes, I don't know. Um, what the boni tree and shrub might be. It's probably your three-in-one type of idea, systemic insecticide, fungicide, and a fertilizer. Um, you could definitely put that on as long as it's not been six to eight weeks since you put it on last. So Brenda says, so we can put the garden mums to the side when they are done and see how they are in the spring when you plant them. Um, yeah, so Brenda, what you could do is just leave it in that pot. So a lot of people use their florist mums inside. So when you plant, so if you're using it outside, um, then you can uh, just cut it off, stick it in the backyard somewhere, water it every once in a while if it's dry, but really don't have to do much to it. Um, and then um, see what happens in the spring. If it starts to kind of come back out of the ground again, you know it made it through the winter, then you can plant it. Or you can just go ahead and plant it after it's done blooming, see what happens next year. Um, but they're not as hardy as the garden mums for sure. Uh, so Lila said systemic insecticide kills pollen, that's for sure. So be careful. Um, so if it is, I, I'm not quite sure what that bonide uh, tree and shrub is, but roses, definitely pollinators are on your roses. So unless it's like a heavy, heavy infestation of, of something, uh, which then in that case, we might just uh, suggest as those roses go into dormancy, just cut them back uh, around Valentine's Day, cut them back kind of hard. It'll kind of rejuvenate them in that when you cut them back, use some uh, dormant oil, which is not gonna hurt the pollinators and just kind of douse them in that, that'll choke them out. Uh, choke out any kind of insects that you might have. Warren said, so you say fall is the best for planting. Is there a month that is the, that is the best? It's best to wait for trees to lose its leaves. Thanks again. So Warren, um, that's, it's, it's a tough question. I have always said fall is the best time to plant trees or shrubs because that's when roots develop. However, I will say spring is the most commonly planted time frame. And what, what, I'm, what I kind of mean by that is in the garden center uh, industry, in, in, in the, the, the plant selling business, uh, plants are gonna sell, or you're gonna get the biggest selection when we have the highest traffic, when we have the ability to sell a majority of them. So um, if you're looking for the biggest selection, Warren, 
then spring you're going to have the biggest selection. Now we got a great selection of trees right now. We got a great selection of shrubs. We always try and have a very good selection. But what I will tell people, especially this comes up a lot when we talk about perennials. Uh, if you're doing like a pollinator garden um, and you're, you're looking for specific types of perennials that bloom specific times of the year, we're not going to really have those until it's closer to its season of putting on its show. Um, like or ornamental grasses, for instance. Um, we have probably the biggest selection now because this is when those plumes come out. And so we save some space in the spring when you might plant an ornamental grass, but you're going to get the best selection now. So you kind of always have to kind of keep checking in with your garden center um, to, to find out uh, what it, or to get exactly what you're looking for. But fall is the best time to plant trees or shrubs. I believe that. I believe that to be true. It is definitely the longest time frame before summer hits, so they're established. However, if you don't find what you want, you're probably going to find it in the spring because that's when we have the biggest selection. So Leo said bonine is systemic. So yep, if it's a systemic, just be careful. If, you're, if your roses are blooming, um, then don't maybe spray it yet. Wait till it goes dormant and then you can use that. Um, and if it's, if it's one of those year-long systemic drenches, then maybe we should use something different. So Deb said tree and shrub is systemic and lasts a year. In the Midwest, we use it in the spring, repels pests. Um, so Deb, it, yes, it's a very good one. If you're worried about the pollinators, or if you've got lots of bees and butterflies all over your roses and you want to be careful, then uh, we, can, we can do, like I said, we can, we can take it, cut it back around. Valentine's Day is a great day to cut back roses. So you cut them back, you can spray it with dormant oil, um, and then that way we didn't use any kind of systemic insecticides on something that the pollinators might be on. Um, so that, that is an option for you. But if it's a heavy, heavy infestation, it's not blooming at all, then you might be able to use it now. There are different types of systemics that don't last as long. So we carry one called um, high yield systemic insect spray. That one you can spray on when it's dormant. It'll go into the system of the plant, prevent any of those insects from eating the plant um, while it's not blooming. And then it's out of its system by the time it starts to bloom again in the spring. So you got lots of different options there. Um, Deborah said, you are awesome, thanks. Um, Lila said, please use organic methods. We are having pollinator crisis now due to systemic Chesapeake Master Gardener. Yeah, I mean, definitely we always recommend using some sort of organic solution if you can. We've got lots of choices. Dormant oils, um, neem oil, uh, spinosad, um, there's uh, the insecticidal soap. Uh, so there's lots and lots of different options to control pests organically. Um, and like I said, sometimes, Deb, just taking that rose when it goes dormant around February and cutting it back, that's the best time to cut them back. Um, and just cut them back and get that foliage out of there, get all the leaf litter out of there, maybe replace the mulch around it. Some of that just by itself might cure your issues that you're having. Um, so hopefully that helps. Well, hey everybody, I had a great time. Enjoyed this, it was great questions and answers, uh, or hopefully good answers, but great questions. Uh, loved loved uh, hearing from everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Have a great, amazing weekend. Enjoy fall, start decorating. It's an amazing time to get outside. Uh, have a great day, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week if you wanna tune in for our houseplant uh, seminars, our houseplant webinars, all about houseplants next Wednesday and Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody, bye.